This is Kelly Hill, technology reporter with RCR Wireless News. I'm here at IWCE 2018 with Emo Obrick, but we are going to talk about the 28 gigahertz testing that you guys did recently um, with Signals Research Group. Yeah. So you tested Verizon's uh, pre-commercial network in Houston, right? Right. So this is their uh, 5G TF or technical forum standard that uh, uh, Verizon, it is a, a pre-5G standard, if you want to call it that. They would call it a 5G standard, but uh, they developed that standard with uh, companies like Samsung, uh, Nokia, and uh, KT, uh, Korea Telecom, is used in the Olympics uh, recently. Oh, wow. So uh, this is uh, what they're deploying in their network. So their trial network in Houston, Texas. Um, in that particular market, Samsung is the infrastructure provider. And what did you guys find? You know, is 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 this stuff robust? Is it, you know, does it deliver on what 5, 5G is supposed to be? So it's interesting. Um, so when we went in to uh, do the uh, testing on the network, uh, it is a trial network, it is early days, and it's millimeter wave. So as an engineer, I went in extremely skeptical of millimeter wave. I did not think from a technical perspective it was going to be very usable. What I, ca I came away very impressed though. The uh, uh, technology that's in there is very similar to 5G NR, the 3GPP standard. So we were really evaluating millimeter wave as opposed to the 5G performance characteristics. So we used an RF scanner from Roden Schwartz and did an industry first of measuring the performance, uh, the RF performance of millimeter wave um, in outdoor coverage. So uh, seeing how it worked off of buildings, non-line of sight around buildings, being able to go, some people said, oh, it'll only work within 100 feet. We were 4,000 feet away from the site, uh, line of sight, and still getting good uh, numbers that uh, uh, could uh, give you good data rates. What's interesting is that um, Verizon has stated they're going to provide gigabit services. But we found instances where, you, in a lot of instances, you would not get gigabit services, but you're getting 500, 300 megabits per second. Still very usable data. It's higher than my broadband at home, my wired broadband. So the ability to do that, I think, and serve customers and being able to go in communities and subdivisions, um, it's an interesting um, uh, paradigm because fixed wireless has never really worked in mass before because the technology hasn't been able to deliver the goods. Now I think you have something that's very capable of that. Wow. Anything else that struck you out of the testing that you guys did? You know, um, the way that we have measured networks in the past with drive test equipment and, you, uh, uh, and being able to get signals, we had to, ch and that's what we've done for years at, at SRG, um, it's been very uh, challenging now with 5G because now you have beam steering and directed beams and you have these phased array antennas and it's just a different paradigm. So how we test and measure networks in the field is going to look very different than what we did in the past. There'll be some similarities. The metrics and KPIs will be similar, but now we're looking at individual beams and how um, they're manipulated in the network and how much data is given to each user and how you can reuse signals um, from uh, the same sector and different beams. You now have arrays, antenna arrays, that have you know 500, maybe 1,024 antenna elements where you maybe only had four before. So it's just, it's a really, it's, a, it's very different. Um, and that's at millimeter wave. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about um, CBRS, 3.5 gigahertz and other bands. 2.5. Yeah, or even 2.5. deploying massive MIMO. Yeah, so um, how we measure those networks and, and evaluate them and the performance, it's going to be different. So it's a new um, experience for those testing it like ourselves and for the equipment manufacturers and how we evaluate it. So that I came away from that like a, a little bit puzzled. I'm like, okay, we learned some lessons on what, what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a, a great uh, a learning tool to be able to go into the field and the trial networks and do that. So we're excited um, once we get CPEs and UE test equipment that works uh, in millimeter wave to do the next round of performance testing. <laughs> I was just going to ask if you guys had actual UEs or if you just, or you said you relied on the scanner? Yeah, so we did RF scanning first, okay. um, and uh, the uh, CPE manufacturers um, are, are lining up now after that report. I think it got good traction, and um, so now they're interested to uh, test the performance of that out. I think um, the market is early, so they don't want to uh, maybe ne neg. yeah they don't want maybe uh, <laughs> negative information to come out or something that isn't quite ready mm -hmm. for prime time. So um, I think that will be our first foray into testing 5G. And then um, when 5G NR comes out later this year or early next year with devices, 
then um, we'll see how that works. Um, so we're, we're excited about it, a lot, a lot of new opportunities. And also with uh, AT&T saying that they're gonna compete and now T-Mobile having an announcement in the 600 megahertz band um, and in millimeter wave, um, there's a lot of exciting tests with Massive MIMO and, uh, and the test equipment, how we do that. The um, device market has often lagged the infrastructure market. So uh, we're waiting for the test equipment vendors to come up to speed. There's some challenges there. Now that we get above gigabit speeds, the ethernet ports uh, on our laptops are only a gigabit. So now if we're capturing above that, the test equipment has to change the interfaces. Now we have to use different interfaces on our laptops. We have to look at using Thunderbolt on a Mac or using USB 3.1. So just interesting challenges that we haven't had to address because we've never had data rates that fast. So um, it changes how we do testing. The test equipment manufacturers have to change that. So it's some interesting uh, problems. We thought we'd kind of crack the nut and everything on LTE and now it's uh, new challenges going forward. <laughs> Yeah, the perils of generational jumps. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for talking with us about this, Emil, and we'll have to take a look at the report. All right, thanks, Kelly. Yep.